Hello, welcome to Martial Arts Business Success. My name is Phil Britton and I'm Graham McDonald. As always, we are here with some great sound advice, business tips, tools and strategies on how you can build your business. And today we're talking about sort of some simple tips that you can use to improve or double or triple your sales. Because at the end of the day, um, when it doesn't matter what business you're in, you're either trying to get clients, you're trying to convert them, and you're trying to keep them. I think a big chunk of it is your sales process. And we get asked those questions all the time. How do you sell? How do you convert? How do you get them becoming members? So um, we're really interested in giving you guys just some pointers that would you, that you could use for your martial arts business or any industry as well. But they are sort of like the 101s in sales. And if you're not doing it, give yourself a kick up the butt and start doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I guess, Something I've always identified and things that we train our staff is the customer experience, mm. not customer service. Anyone can give you lip service. What's the whole approach? That's from where they first see you, how you brand it, all the rest. Now, look, there's so many tying factors, but you know we're not gonna talk about branding today. We're not gonna talk about that. We're actually gonna talk about the, the strategies to help you convert. And I know that we say this on a regular basis and we may, may sound like a broken record, but honestly, this stuff is trialed, tested, and actually look bulletproof. People will buy from people they know, like, and trust. And it's about building that rapport and building that connection. Now, there's many factors to develop that, but there's some of the things that I know our sales team find that when they genuinely you know, give and serve and help the clients as much as they can, they build that rapport and they're more likely to convert than if they're just there trying to get a conversion. Yep. So I urge you right now, just have a think about it, of a good sales experience versus a bad one. Uh, now, the difference between someone in our industry who's come onto the sales job role quite early versus someone who's been there for a, well, quite a, uh, a lengthy amount of time, what I would suggest is the difference is they've, they've bought in to the deeper benefits uh, of what their product and service will offer. So my tip number one is if you wanna double your sales, you need to be very, very clear on your motivation behind selling. Mm. So does it come from your heart? Because if you're just selling to make a dollar to get the conversion, then you're not gonna come across congruent or <laughs> yes. trusted like Graham said. So number one thing is someone has to learn and know and be fully bought in to your product or service and drill it down to the life-changing experience that that product or service will give them if they buy it. You know, so you ha what I'm saying is the salesperson has to come from a motivation that is congruent and authentic and from their heart. Mm. And I think it's when, you know, and, and this is why I said when someone's been in the industry for so long and you've seen so many changes and people and all the people you've helped, you can quite easily rip that off. Another big difference was when we became parents. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we were young kids, you know, doing sales stuff. It was different than when we became a parent and we were able to mm. really talk from heart about the benefits of as a parent to a child and yep. you know so really the, the level of authenticity and reasons behind selling became so rudely uh, rootedly uh, deep into you know the transformation that it was so easy to sell would you agree oh for sure let me ask you a question for what if, what if some of the guys listening and the viewers here uh don't necessarily have that life experience they're, they're a little bit younger in that job role because i know that we've trained some great sales staff and some great uh, i guess program directors they don't have kids, yep. they haven't been in the industry a long time. What are some of the things that we've done to really help them develop and be authentic? And I think that's really what we're talking about here is, is not being, here's a script to follow the script yep. and let's pitch the script. What about being authentic? How, how, do we, how do we develop that relationship and give them the power to be authentic in that role? Uh, I mean, there's many ways to do it, but the first thing that comes to my mind here is a more of a training tool that we've used before is to sort of get the guys and the girls as a team to think about, uh, as a collective group, what are all the benefits, what are all the things that people get from doing martial arts? Uh, and we list them all down and we get probably the new salesperson to be quite heavily involved, uh, some of the more experienced people to be involved as well. And so like, well, you know, what benefit does martial arts give? And, and I think the, the thing is to drill really, really deep. Because you can just say they get fitter, okay, but and then how does getting fit help them? Yeah. And how does that help the parent? Mm. And how does that help them at school? So we gotta keep asking a question that you ask all the time mm. about staff when it comes, <laughs> comes to stats, why, 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 why? And what you wanna do is go, well, list all the things as, a, as an ex, 
you know, to explore all the things and the benefits that martial arts gives somebody. Now do it for kids, teenagers and adults because they're generally the three age groups that we do it for. And then what I suggest you do then as well, you've got the list and you go, all right, cool. Then I would then get that new salesperson to go and talk to some people mm. within your school and, and, and almost like do a survey, but a live survey. <laughs> so look, we're doing this at our martial arts school and um, you know, I'm moving into this role here and I just want to get some information about the benefits that martial arts has given you and your child and be that one-on-one -on -one and, yeah. and experience that, that sort of transformation mm. uh, in person as well. Definitely. I think that's very big. And then the third thing that I would get them to do is then, I think one of the biggest things you need to do is, is, is for sales is, you know, it sort of stems off this, but it's connected a little bit as well, but not quite as disjointed if that makes sense, is to understand the value of it compared to other things. Mm. So, you know, martial arts, what we cost and, and the benefits we have worth uh, versus swimming lessons. Swimming lessons in Australia is very, very important. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everyone needs to learn it. But I want martial arts to be, if not equal, but more valuable than that. Uh, we're talking about drama, dance lessons, music. You know, what do they charge? What are they? What life lessons do they get out of that? Versus what do we get? So they get bought in to the message and the reason and what we're offering. Yeah, great. So I guess what we've done is we've given you now some strategies on how to build that rapport initially. Something I found recently with our team is, uh, and some great advice I've been able to share with them is when they come up against a roadblock or a question or something that someone's got a, a fear, and there was three sort of, I guess, words here, feel, felt, and found. So when you're faced with some rebuttals or some questions, I understand how you feel. To be honest with you, I found that when I did the classes, and I know how you felt, feel, felt and found. These three things are really great to put you in a position of empathy and understanding how they how they feel. Because at the end of the day, when somebody goes, look, I'm not quite sure if I'm good enough. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm fit enough. I'm not sure if I can afford it. Uh, am I asking silly questions? This is something, especially when someone walks in the door, they're a little bit low on self-confidence. It's exactly the program they, they want and they need. And I felt, oh, I, I understand how you feel. The very first day I walked in, I was nervous just like you. What you've done is you've taken away that, uh, I guess that fear from them and made them understand, geez, I'm not the only one that feels this way. Because I know that's something that a lot of people uh, will find, great salespeople will regurgitate and they'll sort of you know, do the script, yeah. but they don't always put themselves in the position of the person wanting to buy. Mm. And I know that that's something that we do very, very well in a business. Although we call the role of program director or salesperson, realistically, we're not trying to sell. We're trying to help the person to buy our product. And that is we will give you every reason why we're the right fit. If we're not, that's fine. If we are, we'd love you to be there. Yep. And I guess that's the thing. We're not that cheesy salespeople. That's not what we're about. But that's where you've got to go back and have that empathy of, I understand how you feel, found, and felt. Mm. I felt the same way I found, da, 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 da. So some really quite easy, simple things to overcome objections. And just to, to elaborate on that as well, is so you're congruent because you know you don't want to go, that's who I felt, but you never felt that way. <laughs> yeah. Is then you can use testimonials or real life experiences or people throughout your school. So for example, if we've had uh, a very shy, timid mm. young lad or female come through, we would go, you know what, we've had that uh, happen before. Actually, look out there, that window there, there's a, you know, a, a, an instructor there. When he came through the door, yep. he felt like this, and we, exactly. found, and we found that. So you can not only use your experience, but you can use the experience of others who've walked that path as well. So another big tip, or tip number two, we're not gonna go too deep, is um, something that's quite obvious, but it's something that we need to always remember, because, I don't know, again, I'm gonna get you to think back to a time where you did, uh, had a sales experience, and what was good and what was bad. Now, when someone is selling at you, it's very, um, it's very tough for you to make that buying decision. Whereas what we wanna try and do is utilize our two ears and our one mouth, which means we listen twice as much as we talk. And we talk about it before, about diagnostic selling. Mm. Uh, and as doctors do it very well, you come in and you say, well, so what's wrong? And you give them a description and say, so where exactly does that feel? And you tell them a little bit further, and how does that inhibit you? You know, so that they, op they, they use diagnostic or discovery questions to get the person to talk more, 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 mm -hmm. more. And you almost want to try and go as so deep until literally there's no more conversation on the table. <laughs> and therefore, you know you've uncovered 
everything and anything there is to know about that person so that you can diagnose the best product, service, class, whatever mm. for them. Setting yourself up and actually converting more clients to your school. Yeah, yeah, great. Look, great sound advice. And it's things that we're actively doing on a regular basis in our, in our uh, you know, normal schools and normal classes and normal sort of programs is not trying to force it down their throat, but just trying to discover how can we provide or at least help you to find the best solution for the challenges you, you guys are facing. That's great conversation, build a rapport, make sure they trust you, and some great questions as you were talking about, mate, connecting, which, which is gonna give you a, a better understanding of what they need and really cut through and get that conversion that you're looking for. But at the end of the day, customer experience. Going back to that, they walk out the door going, wow, what amazing people. Not only did I get a great school to join, but they actually care about my interest and care yeah. about me as a person or my family. So yeah. some great sound advice there. Yeah, guys, well, that's the wrap for this particular podcast. I just want to do a shout out, as always, to our sponsors. We have Hyper, the team out there, who deliver some really good add-ons to your martial arts school. So if you're really sort of struggling for an upgrade program, or a bully buster event, a school event, or whatever it may be, something a little bit different that you don't have to plan and you don't have to organize, then Hyper have a few, the Pro Training and the Hyper Fight Club. We've got a bit of a deal with those guys. We're working be closely with them for the last, I don't know, eight years. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you know, they've been giving us a discount. You can get 50% off any of their training there, but you just have to email us, admin at tmar.com.au before we vet you out and let you let you loose on that program as well. We've also got uh, out of uh, pure frustration with ourselves and some <laughs> other martial arts businesses out there. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever suffered bad uh, CRM, uh, database, uh, student management, and the list goes on. But we've had our hair pulled out for many, many years, and the thing is, we've created our own, and we're doing a soft launch very, very soon, and we're looking at uh, a couple of schools, maybe 10 by max, to test run our software. Now, we're obviously running within our schools, but we want to offer that to a few other schools out there as well. So if you think that sits, suits you guys and um, may help you with your business, then reach out to us, again, that email, admin at tmod.com.au. That's a martial arts based customized software to give you uh, peace of mind and simple and easy ways to track, measure, and do all that stuff for CRM should. Hey, guess what, guys? Guess what? Here's the kicker. It's free. <laughs> free. Yeah, you're not okay. going to have to pay for it. You might think, what the catch? Honestly, guys, it's just what we do just to make yeah. sure we, we help the industry. That, that's our goal. So drop us a line, let us know. We'll tell you all about it. Send you some links, and you can test and measure yourselves and see what you reckon. All right, team. Have a good week. Catch ya. Take care.